Oh man, the nine miler, dude. At least you do it as a group, so that kind of helps. A nine mile speed march, a squatted run, starting and finishing as a troop in 90 minutes. It's a collective test in time, in step with each other. You need those other guys around you and they need you around them as well. That's brutal. From A to B, oh my fit gosh. to fight at the end. That's what the nine miles is designed for. Nine miles alone right, is gonna suck for, for a lot of people. Okay. We're gonna stick in one pack, but we stick up, we keep up with it, all right? We keep the gaps nice and tight, all right? I like those if sleeveless shirts, man. Like that, all right, the person behind him goes around, yeah? Fill the gap. Don't let the gap build, alright? Oh, yeah. Build the gap, yep. Easier said than done. <laughs> if you know, you know. But this, again, dude, I'm just trying to think of this, like the, the time, and then you look at the uniform that they're wearing. First, it's like, gnarly. Two or three miles is proper fast pace. You're not running for your pace, it's like the troops pace, so you know, you're either going shorter in your stride or lengthening your stride to like keep up with the troop. Caught me out a bit at first. <laughs> Lads get injuries and stuff like the whole way through training. You see him like limping through speed marches, you know, it's awful. So who, who actually sets the pace? The instructors? 35 minutes in, and a few are struggling to keep up with the rest of the troop. One last, keep pushing. Hmm. Some of us were like putting our hands in his back, trying to say, come on, push forward, keep with it. It's about so I'll say, I mean, there's definitely times where you're the one that's feeling it and you're just like really, really hurting. But it really sucks when you're in like a group and you're doing a sort of group event and you see people like, you know, falling back and then everybody's trying to do what they can to like help them out. Like if you're doing a ruck march or a hike and the person that's falling out grabs your backpack and you're trying to like drag them along, man, I gotta say, I've done that a lot and it's just, it's really, really frustrating. So it hurts when you see your buddies falling out, but it also hurts with the camaraderie because then you have, you have all these people trying to help them out and push them, which is, you know, awesome. That's what it's all about. But it gets really, really frustrating when people start to like feel sorry for themselves and they're really not putting in the efforts. But sometimes, I mean, yeah, these guys are going to be destroyed. Their bodies are definitely going to be feeling it. So sometimes, sometimes you really can't help it because it's probably going to end up turning into an injury if you really pushed it to a certain extent. Out getting the whole troop across the line and then being ready to fight at the other end. Stick with it, mate, you got it. A certain amount of lads drop back and you don't make the pace where the whole thing's written off and you mean everyone else failing. Hmm. You can not see an increase. If you drop back another 20 yards, you're in the wagon. And that's something we do not want to be doing. Come on. Damn. That dude looks old, pretty old too and he's like, motivated. Struggling to keep up the pace. I think he knew he was making it more difficult for us. Obviously, without him, we, we had a better chance of passing as a group. So he pushed himself back hmm. and let us carry on. It does yep, take it a sucks. hit when people do fail. Look, I've always had the fear of failure, fear of not being good enough. It will paralyze you and you won't want to go any further. Okay, hmm. you put him in the wagon, man. OK, stop that. Get in the wagon. Damn. Just there. It's the end of the road for this recruit. You don't end up to fail. And if I failed, I'd be, I'd be so unhappy. You know, you never want to be a failure, do you? Everyone's everyone's a part. So I feel bad for lads that have failed and stuff because hmm. I'd hate to fail. Yeah, dude, screw that. It's the worst yeah, feeling ever. Sometimes you need it, but it, it sucks. Especially for something like this where you There's put in that about effort. shared hardship when you go through it in training. When you're motivated by the needs of other people that's a far stronger motivator than <laughs> your own needs yeah and well I said think afghanistan was a, a real extreme example of it for me yeah hell yeah dude john was deployed to afghanistan in 2010 as part of the commando's task to rid helmand province of taliban insurgents damn when I got out there, I was given a sleeping area and told that the last three people to sleep in that bed had all either been killed or seriously injured. Um, so it was unlucky to sleep there. Damn. Where was that? Yeah, they've definitely got like a long barrel rifle or something, mate. Watch out. I love seeing the old combat footage. 
I say old. I mean, it's and only like a couple years day, before you've got to step outside when I was the, in you know, the relative safety of your patrol base, and you knew you were walking around a low density minefield. I think motivation is a really interesting thing. For me, very quickly, it became about recognizing the job we were there to do. See you again. Bye. 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 Yeah, I agree. Motivation is super interesting. The innocent kids and families that were there and what was done to them. There was this sense of, well, whatever we can do to try and relieve that it is worthwhile. Then there's oh, yeah. the comradeship and looking to the guys left and right of you and knowing that you're, you're looking after each other and you're doing it for them. Yeah, some However days it's nervous just you were survival. Patrol, it, it's funny. Your mindset just changes. You almost don't quite realize how much you've been training for it. <laughs> That's interesting. What they're doing is just embedding this unselfishness and that's that's just the way it is. Hmm. Losing only one member, the rest of the lads have stuck together and are drummed back into camp. Oh, that's signifying cool. Signifying they've passed the second test. Okay, I like that. Some good motivation. It's been a while now. I've seen loads of other troops getting drummed in. You think, yeah, one day that'll be me. And then... It's finally you. It's a pretty uh, immense <laughs> feeling. I had that same feeling when I was in Paris Island, uh, like the parade deck, basically where everybody does their graduations and whatnot, was right next to our barracks. So every Friday you would see all these you know, families coming, all these people graduating, all of them leaving as Marines, and you're there and you have you know, eight weeks left or you know, 10 weeks left, four weeks left even. It just feels like it's always so far away, but then when you actually get to that point, it is pretty freaking cool. I was just, I felt so proud marching through the camp. I feel like they are my brothers. I feel like I will do anything for them, do you know what I mean? Into you, make sure you get the carbs into you. Okay, now wait for the, the next detail. Move! You can rely on. Yo, I don't know if I just catch random stuff during these videos, but this dude is straight up mean mugging, like future SAS or SBS vibes right there. Move! <laughs> you can rely on those people in times of hardship. And ultimately, that's what played out for me in the most um, extreme environment out in Afghanistan. When, when I needed those guys the most, they hmm. were absolutely on it. And I shouldn't be here today, but it's only because of the quality of the guys around me that, that I am. Hell yeah. People started getting blown up. And it, it was just a matter of time. And, you know, eventually it, it was my turn. And all of a sudden, my that world sucks. just went into slow motion. I'm looking up at this grey dawn sky. I know I'm flying through the air. And then I landed on the floor and everything just went from slow motion to kind of double speed. Damn. And then I became unconscious. My next memory is of waking up again and the quad bike had arrived. One of my corporals, Jim, was looking down at me on a stretcher, eyes closed. He pretty much, because he was listening to the reports, was assuming that, you know, I was dead or dying by this stage. Hmm. And he said, my eyes just popped open. I looked straight up at him and went, hey up, Jim, how are you doing, mate? <laughs> That'd be trippy. I was trying to put on a bit of bravado. I was trying to let the guys know that I was okay and I was going to survive and I had this sort of fear that if I became unconscious again that might be it, that I might die and just really holding on to consciousness literally for dear life Damn. and that was it. I, I woke up three days later in Birmingham. I hear a lot of those Very stories quickly, man. I came to the conclusion that I kind of had two choices. I could either roll over and die or I could get up and get on with it. Badass, man. I felt like it was a bit of a precipice. Either side of me was despair. Hmm. 
and I knew that whatever happened, I need to be overly positive, overly determined about it and setting myself tiny little goals all the time, but constant, what's the next goal? What's the next goal? All right, that's a good way to do it. It's so, it's so cool. Yeah, right. Like, I, I like how they, I mean, it's really crappy to see, you know, what, what actually happened to him, but I like how they sort of have that build up to where you have this individual who's talking about this motivation, talking about deploying and what his thoughts and feelings were whenever he was actually going and, you know, doing the thing overseas. But then you have, you know, his story of him getting injured. And then you have his sort of success story now, as far as how he overcame those, uh, those feelings and emotions and how that actually relates back to the training as far as having that attitude. And almost like you were saying with being a little bit more overconfident in, in your ability to push past this hardship. And he's, again, he's relating it back to his training and, and having that mindset because I, again, I like, I like how they actually revealed it here where you have him just talking and then he sort of reveals his story, talks about those motivations to why he joined and how he was able to use that sort of motivation and mentality to push past that sort of hardship and take him to where he is today. I mean, there's, there's very few things that are as inspiring as stories like this. I mean, in my personal opinion. Um, I could walk all day on my, on my legs. I didn't need to use a wheelchair. Started doing things like going snowboarding, then I've Damn. had a kid, built a house, had another kid, started a business. I started training on a kayaking machine. The next thing you know, training in a boat. This is sick, dude. Damn. What happens over time is that conscious positivity if you like allows you to achieve lots of different little goals so all of a sudden that precipice that you felt like you were on before is it's a bit more rounded huh. in a way it's interesting continuation of that constant desire you have to develop and improve whilst you're in the marines once it's ingrained in you it's just ingrained in you and it, it carries on outside as well hell yeah man John is the first and only triple amputee in the world to compete against able-bodied racers in world-level ocean events. No kidding. Dude, I gotta say, when I do anything like this, like water sports, I start to feel sorry for myself really, really quick. But then when you have people like him, again, it's just that, that mentality and that never quits sort of mindset going forth and actually putting in some work here. So again, it's just... Super, super Let's inspiring. The Commando Brigade have proven itself and it's done things that widely accepted other regiments wouldn't have been able to do. Hmm. I think there's something about the Royal Marines and having your Green Beret where there's this expectation that you have to live up to. <laughs> you can't let that expectation down. Yeah, I agree with that. Kind of like the US Marines as well. You always kind of hold that with you. You walk a certain way. Yeah, we're all right now. I'm not going to sink anymore. Oh, thank you, mate. I could put in a really Chad quote there. <laughs> if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to do their turn long after you are gone and so hold on when there is nothing left in you, except the will that says to them, hold on, uh, Kipling, if. All right. I do like the definitions that they actually add because I am not familiar with that sort of terminology or vernacular, so I can appreciate that. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, dude. Eight, eight, seven, seven, six, it's the third test in four days. Okay, jogging the opposite Is that how they warm up? The lads are expected to push their body to its limit in a test responsible for more serious injuries than any other. Three, yeah, it makes sense. Four, the Tarzan assault course. It's high intensity, military agility at speed, at height, Damn. ground, <laughs> crawling, Climbing, everything else. All with the weapon, too. You can't pace yourself. 
you're overcoming lots of different types of obstacles as quickly as you can to maintain the momentum of battle. Everything's harder when it's wet. Requires quite a lot of power to get over some of those obstacles. Then it's off to the final 30 foot wall to climb. You get to the top of that wall. Do you have to shout your name? That's one pretty difficult. Just so do they change anything when it's like super wet or pouring? I, I mean, I know that, that might be a really dumb question because it is a Royal Marine Commandos. But like, I'm thinking it might be like really hard, if not like impossible to do certain things. At least, you know, the speed is definitely going to get hurt. But some of those obstacles when they're like soaking wet, it just might be like really hard to get a good grip or like your feet might be slipping a lot. Maybe they design the obstacles around that. But yeah, that would be such a pain in the ass. To, to get that <laughs> gasp out and make sure you do it. Let's go, bro. It is absolute agony. Hmm. Oh, yes. It's like that muscle there that connects from my calf to okay, so my hamstring. No, no, it's a bit dull. Dull, but it's just there when it, when it hurts more when, when it's yeah. sprinting about. Kane's already spent 10 months injured with a stress fracture. Hmm. And now it's back to haunt him. Damn, dude. Oh, like. yeah. So if it's on the inside of your knees, make sure you're stretching lots of lateral stuff, okay? Stretching yeah. all the inside, all right, yeah? Okay? Yeah, and just rolling it out, okay? The inside of the thigh. All right, keep it loose. You're in, yeah? Cool. And you can hang out all you want. Go on. <laughs> now yeah. at this stage, it's, it is intense and it, it is hard. Any little thing can just put you off. It's just not what you want when you're this close at all. Yeah, oh, recovery yeah. must get hard. Fail the most, reckon it's this one. Well, I have the most people fail, potentially. Yeah. It, can, it can go so wrong. Yeah. God. Yeah, you slip this. like the wrong way. Is that, like, it's going to hurt. Excuses in your head like, oh, something's not right here, so I might have to stop. But then, yeah, you, it's just weakness in it, I guess. <laughs> what were you asking the PTI about? Um, just got a little niggle in the side of my knee there, so oh, yeah. just give me some stretches and stuff to do. Fair one, yeah. A bit too late now, though, we said. Got to do it, yeah. How are your legs feel? My calf is proper tight. Mm. Like it's all mental, mate. It's all mental. Injuries do happen, and I'd hate for it to happen to me. Could it slow me down or anything? Could it fail me? I'm dreading it, if I'm honest with you, but it's got to be done. Yeah, that was my biggest fear when I was in... Well, boot camp is what comes to mind, you know, specifically. But yeah, like... Getting an injury, uh, man, that was like my worst nightmare because you get an injury, you get sent back in training and then you're there for that much longer. Then you need to fight that like that, like he was kind of talking about before. You get that that mental wall you have to push past and it's pretty freaking hard, especially when you're, you know, not used to this sort of military mentality or challenging yourself to this regard. So, yeah, having that sort of fear of an injury is very, very valid. I'm sure everybody gets it at some point, especially for these guys when, again, that recovery is going to get harder and harder. Exactly where we want it. Game face is on. Hard, fast, aggressive. From the minute you jump up that tower <laughs> to the minute you scream your name at the top of that wall. 13 minutes, lad, stands in the way of you and having three tests in the bag. Despite already passing two tests, if you finish after the time limit or miss any obstacles, you still fail the whole commando course. Why are they wetting it? Fighting boys, let's go. Going on. Slide better? Five foot at a time, going higher and higher. You end up like 30 foot in the air. Let's go. I hate heights, but I want to Same. When you end up like, about to throw yourself off, you look down and you're like, oh, this is actually quite high and like, there's nothing really stopping me from falling in. <laughs> Even if I'm a bit scared, you've got to do this to actually progress. Last week we did a run through and we lost one of the section commanders. He punched through the net wrong and Damn. snapped his leg. The bone was poking through the skin. It was, it was terrible, really. Ooh. And we lost a really, really good lad then. Three, two, Damn. I don't want to be getting injured this late in the game. I've been there before. Especially an injury thing, like that. In the teeth. Yeah. Jeez. Doing anything to not do that again. 
Yeah, that's it. You're down and you're going straight into it. Of, I find a lot of time, like, people just do just crack on with them in training and stuff because, like, I know for me, I wouldn't want to be in and out of med bay, like, every weekend saying, oh, I'm injured, this, that, and the other. <laughs> yeah. Keep pushing. Keep going. If you're feeling the pain, you just carry on and just push for it. So I, I think that's the hardest part about it. Jeez. Putting mind over matter to keep pushing when, when your body says no. You just get the sweaty palms being that high up. If I had an injury now, you just you'd have to get on with it because what would be the point of just like slowing down your career for a little injury that you can manage with a few painkillers and just <laughs> get out of it? <laughs> it's just definitely a life lesson because it means you get through more, I guess, later in life, thinking, yeah, all right, I can just get on with this. I agree, yeah, yeah. Look up now, just brought the last bit in, move to the left hand side of the pole, keep both hands. Burn the corporal! Burn the left. Burn the corporal! If other people can do it, then I can definitely do it. <laughs> Dom's done it. Oh, yeah. Look at that, three down. Good stuff. It's when you come out of that rope, you know, when you slide down, you rip your hand out, like it falls off, you rip the scab open. Oh. Bleeding a bit. Look cool on how much you scar, though. Girls like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the scars at the end of the day. Kane has fought through his injury to reach the final obstacle. Speed up this wall now, come on. The last thing, come on. In the Royal Marines, there's a saying, it's only pain. And the start of training, you're like, how, 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 how is this even a saying? But as the, as the weeks go on, <laughs> you, you fully do learn to understand that it is only pain and your mental toughness increases. As long as your mind's strong, then your body will keep going, as long as you tell it to. All the way up, all the way up. Come on, hmm. speed it up. Off to the left. So did you get the time? Get it! Let's go, bro. Let's see. Damn, dude. 13 minutes, though. That's got to be the longest 13 minutes of your life. What are you doing? What are you doing at the top? <laughs> Why do you do that? So it falls down. The questions are always going to come hmm. into your head, but you just... I'm kind of wondering what he's doing right here with, like, the, the rope and harness. I mean, maybe to help someone if they fall... Or I don't even know. Maybe if they get stuck, I have no idea. If you guys know what he's doing, let me know. Maybe I'm just like overlooking something really obvious, but yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe resetting the equipment. The questions are always going to come into your head, but you just got to have the answers there straight away to tell yourself like, I'm doing this and I'm not going to stop until I've, I've done it. Hmm. Jackson, down there, make sure you're stretching. All right, loosen it off, okay? You have to keep going and that's where you find out more about yourself as well. Hanging out. When you keep going, then you <laughs> realise how strong you, you can actually be and how strong you are. Yeah, it's only pain. I like that phrase, hang hanging out. Get the line back. Get the foot. It's a lip, that. Yes, you got oh, it, hell yeah. yeah. It's warm today. Yeah. Despite injury, Kane finished the course with over two and a half minutes to spare. Damn, okay. Right, good effort today. Three in the bag now. We're laughing. Tomorrow, the only thing that will stop you is your mental state, lads. All right? Easily mm. fit enough. Got to this stage in training, mentally strong enough and fit enough, lads. All right? Oh, yeah. All right, boys? Oh. Happy? Oh. All right. Quick. Damn. You get more and more height as you get to the test, too, I'm sure. True. That's breaking all the time. But you can't, you can't get comfortable at any point. It's just one thing and then another. The recovery next. Oh man, a 30 miler.